Good morning, Calvary. Good to see you here for Missions Conference 2024. Good to see you. We welcome our online audience, too, to the service this morning. Good to see everyone. Let's stand together. Our first song this morning, Facing a Task Unfinished. Let's sing it together. The text will be on the screen for us. Facing a task unfinished that drives us to our knees. one another. Good to see you. Welcome those visiting with us. We'll be right back. on this last stanza together. Father, who sustained them? Spirit, who inspired? Sing with us. Oh, Father, who sustained them? Oh, Spirit, who inspired? Savior, who loved the strength to toil with steel and tired from cowardice
story will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love. That's the message this morning. Well sung this morning. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Calvary Baptist Red Bank. Whether you're a longtime member or visiting for the first time, we're excited to have you here. To our guests, a warm and special welcome. After the service, we invite you to connect with us. You'll find a connect card located on the back of the seat in front of you. Simply fill it out and bring it to one of our pastors in the lobby where you'll receive a bag of delicious Guatemalan coffee. This coffee is not just a treat for you. It's a product of empowerment produced and roasted by Dare For More Ministries. While you're here, we want to ensure everyone in your family feels at home. Our dynamic kids ministry, currently underway in our CMC building, is led by an amazing team of volunteers. From kindergarten to the fifth grade, we've got engaging activities and lessons tailored just for them. Additionally, we offer a safe and nurturing nursery for our youngest attendees. One of our ushers would be happy to guide you to the right location. Our hope is that you'll leave today feeling not only welcomed, but also uplifted by our worship and inspired by the message from God's Word. Thank you for being a part of our community this morning. Hey church, it's time to start thinking about our next Sunday night gathering coming up on October 20th. So in place of our regular evening service, we switch things up divide up into homes, fill up on food, and just have a great time. It's an opportunity to get closer to others and develop friendships in the church. So sign up starting today in either lobby and let us know if you are willing to be a host. Our Teen Takeover service is next Sunday night, October 6th. This is an opportunity to hear two young men preach God's word, participate in a youth-led worship service, and be encouraged by some testimonies from our teenagers. Thank you again, church family, for your love and support for our youth ministry. Hey church, mark your calendars for October 27th in the evening. That's a Sunday night because that is when we will be hosting our annual trunk or treat. We'll have more details about ways to register and volunteer coming up, but just make sure to mark your calendars because it's an event that you're not going to want to miss. Our Impact Youth Ministry is hosting a fall retreat to Manderley Christian Camp in Pikeville, Tennessee, Friday, November 15th through Saturday, November the 16th. The cost is $65 and you can register online today. This is an opportunity for our teenagers to grow in their walk with the Lord and develop meaningful friendships. Good morning, church. Well, it's finally here. There's something truly special uh, about a, a church missions conference. Uh, just look around and you see all the flags and you realize uh, that the need is great all across uh, this, this great world of ours to get the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. And as you are well aware of, you can look at the banners as well behind me in front of you hanging there uh, by the choir. And you know that this whole conference is themed around the book of Acts. We've been in the book of Acts on Sunday mornings uh, since the beginning of the year. And uh, there's a little phrase in Acts 5.20 that talks about uh, going and standing and speaking. And uh, I know that Pastor Stephen will be preaching on some of these elements, some of these uh, facets of uh, that passage of Scripture over the course of the messages that he'll be bringing to us in the conference. But uh, those, those three words are very important words. They're, they're motivational words. They're words of, of command. They're commanding words uh, it's for us to go. We want to be willing to go wherever God uh, tells us to go, wherever he might send us as young people, as young couples, as families. Uh, uh, and wherever we are in this, in this postmodern world, we've been talking about that a lot too from Acts, to stand for truth and to deliver the truth of the gospel to, uh, to, no, to no matter what the kind of audience, the different categories of people out there, the intellectuals, the intolerant, the dismissive, uh, all the people who, who uh, uh, seem to misunderstand uh, what truth is all about, for us to stand for truth in those environments and then just simply to speak, to speak the name of Jesus. 
And so we give our attention, we turn our, our attention towards different countries of the world. During these next few days, we meet missionaries from uh, all across uh, this world that, that God has called. Uh, we want to be inspired by their willingness to go and to stand and to speak uh, and follow God's call on their life to reach the people group that God's called them to reach. Uh, so this is an exciting couple of days. It's, it's, it starts right now. It'll be over with on Wednesday night. It'll go so quickly, but I hope that you'll just really jump in and uh, sink your teeth in and uh, enjoy each every part of the conference. We have special things uh, every service. Uh, we have um, missions trips to tell you about that are going to be available for you to, to jump into next year. We have things for kids and teens to keep them engaged and active in the, the lives of our missionaries. And so don't miss a single, uh, a single service if you can help it. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to just briefly ask for the live stream sound to be muted so I can make a couple of announcements that uh, just for in the interest of security, we don't want to go out there to the web. So if you're watching on live stream now or later, just stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right. So thank you so much for your understanding as we try to be a little bit creative and careful about those things. Now, our uh, uh, ushers, deacons are coming to put one of these in your hands. We want every family here to get one of our new hot off the press uh, Calvary Missionary Family booklets. Uh, due to how many we printed and the cost involved, we're just going to give one per family. And so please help us out with that. Uh, so, uh, man, a lot of time and a lot of uh, energy and cost uh, has gone into making this beautiful booklet, uh, which gives you pictures and basic information and contact information for uh, our 93, I think 94 missionaries um, around the, the world. And so this is many things. This is something for you to use as a prayer guide, uh, for, uh, for you certainly to, to pray for missionaries daily and be able to put a name with a face. Uh, it's divided up by region, by, by continent, uh, sort of, and by region of our, of our planet. So that's uh, something you can understand. There's also in the back an explanation of what grace giving is all about and faith promise giving uh, on, on the, the back few pages. Uh, and so a lot of things there that uh, would be a great blessing to you just to stay informed and to stay uh, uh, kind of in the know about our missionary family. So this has nothing to do directly with our conference. It's not a conference booklet. It's just a booklet for the next year uh, for you to, to, to have as a reference guide for our precious missionary if you want to make sure we remember them and support them in prayer. Now, the other thing we're going to put in your hands once again, uh, I'm making our, our deacons and ushers work uh, twice this morning, but uh, if you have not yet received a grace giving commitment card. Uh, we want to extend these to you one more time. Uh, if you did not get one of these, maybe they placed them inside, the, they placed them inside the books. They, 
No? Yes? Okay. Um, and so you can get these in either lobby. We've been uh, talking about these for a couple of weeks now. But this is an important part of uh, why we do a missions conference is for us to raise additional support for our missionaries. And so we don't talk about money a whole lot here, but we do around missions conference because this is truly in part a fundraiser for us to uh, uh, kind of uh, amplify and multiply what we can do financially for missionaries. So make sure you get one of these. Uh, if you raise your hand, if you need one, our ushers, deacons, and staff can give these to you. Uh, and so thank you for, for doing that. Pastor Stephen and I, will be uh, covering information about these things over the course of the services. Uh, so make sure that you are paying attention to that uh, and know how to respond, uh, how, how to give these back to us over the course of the next few days. Well, uh, I want to uh, announce that we do have things for uh, elementary age kids during each service uh, starting tonight. Tonight is Kids Choir. And so we just began that. Tonight is Kids Choir and then Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Uh, in the uh, in room 101 over here, we'll dismiss the children uh, right before the preaching time for them to have time with missionary. So, uh, parents, you should be uh, you know, thankful for that, and I know our kids will enjoy their time with the missionaries. Well, we certainly do need to be praying for uh, Western Carolina, uh, Northwest Georgia, uh, South Carolina. I have pastor friends that have no power. Their churches have no power. Uh, I have friends down in Tampa uh, that uh, know people that have lost uh, everything. Uh, so the flooding is quite severe. Many of you have asked about my parents. My parents live in Maggie Valley, North Carolina, and they are, they are fine. Uh, they're a little bit high up in the mountains there, uh, so they don't have internet, uh, but they never lost power, and so we're thankful for their safety. But uh, Asheville, boy, looks certainly very, very bad. So let's be praying for uh, these relief efforts and uh, getting supplies and getting power. Let's pray for our power crews. Uh, roads have to be repaired. Obviously, a lot of uh, uh, things have, have busted it apart and washed away and so we're very grateful that it wasn't too bad here for us uh, but uh, it means it hit somebody else and so our prayers go with um, with uh, a, a lot of uh, our fellow Americans around around uh, our region here well let's uh, let's pray welcome again to our visitors thank you for being here you're here on the first day of our missions conference hope you've sensed that it's a very special Sunday for us we hope that you receive a great blessing today uh, and so uh, I'm going to pray, the choir will sing, and then after all of our music today, I'll just turn it right over to, uh, to Pastor Stephen Maldoff, uh, who was no stranger to our church family, uh, recently joined our staff after uh, 25 years in the field of missions, both as a uh, church planting missionary in Australia and then as a uh, director for uh, BIMI Mission Board here locally. And we're so thankful for his heart for missions. Uh, he told us, he told me yesterday he's been in well over 200, maybe close to 250 50 missions conferences. Uh, so that's got me beat by probably about 200 uh, conferences. And so that's quite a bit. Uh, and so he uh, certainly uh, has been so instrumental in planning this and uh, throwing some creative elements into our conference. And then I'm excited to have him uh, preach and share God's word with us over these next few days. I know you are as well. So let's pray and our choir will continue to uh, bless us with their special about, the, um, about missions. Let's pray. Father, we love you and, and come before you today uh, thankful that, um, uh, that there is such a thing as the gospel. We're grateful uh, for those of us here who are believers who at some point have responded to the gospel and placed faith in Christ. Lord, we, uh, we often forget how blessed we are. We often forget what, what a privilege that is to have uh, been exposed to the truth, to know the truth. Lord, for you to draw us to yourself so we could uh, respond to that truth and, and understand what Christ has done for us. And Lord, as these flags hang around our auditorium today, we are reminded that uh, this is a big world and there are cultures and religions and uh, different contexts in which people live and there are things that people are trusting in that are uh, not going to save them, uh, that, are not, uh, that are far from the simple message of salvation found in Christ. So God, I want to pray. We want to commit this conference to you today. We want to pray that these, uh, these uh, few, few moments, really, in the grand scheme of our, of our lives, just a few moments of, of preaching and teaching and uh, meeting missionaries and uh, hearing about their fields and we're thinking about what you would, uh, how you would use us. I pray that these few short days would accomplish a terrific purpose, a, an everlasting purpose in our hearts and lives and our families 
and in the lifeblood of this church that you would uh, use this to, to keep us, uh, to keep the, the fires kindled uh, and burning hot for, for global evangelism, for church planting here in America and around the world. I pray that you would be with um, our, our dear uh, guests for the conference. We pray, Father, that you would uh, be with Pastor Stephen as he opens up God's word. I pray that all these things would be very exciting to us and that, God, you would work in our hearts and you would work in our minds. You would stir us uh, to go and stand and speak boldly the name of Jesus Christ. I pray also, Father, that financially we'd be able to keep supporting our missionaries like we have been. Lord, thank you for what this church has done, what this church is doing, and what this church will be able to do financially for monthly support, missions projects, big gifts, uh, exciting things happening in the lives of our missionaries. I pray that, uh, Lord, we would uh, submit to you and yield to you about what you would have us to give since we are so very blessed. God, we want to think about those today, um, not far from us, just a few hours away in North Carolina and, and South Carolina and Georgia, as well as Florida, reeling from the storm, from the flooding, from the intense rains, and Lord, so many without power. Uh, churches not meeting today, uh, Lord, but seeking to go out and be a blessing to their community. I pray, Father, for recovery efforts and for cleanup and for power restoration that you would help uh, uh, each of those, uh, those linemen, uh, each of the people uh, passing out food. Father, just give your grace and strength to those that are affected by the, uh, by the remnants of this hurricane. Thank you for your blessing uh, in our lives and the protection in our area. Father, we do also come with personal needs. We come today with uh, heavy hearts about people in our lives and financial needs and health needs and spiritual needs and ask God that we'd find uh, rest and comfort today at the foot of the cross and by your spirit that you would bring great clarity of scripture to us, that you would bring us to a place of trust in you. Uh, and Lord, thank you for the fellowship of a church family. I ask your blessing on the remainder of our service today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
this morning. Let's sing some more. Satisfy us with your love. You'll see the text there this morning as we focus on missions and the calling of God on our lives. Thankful for what Jesus has done for us, his sacrifice, his love for us, this everlasting God that we serve. Sing together with us. You have been our dwelling place, O everlasting God. Before you formed the mountain tops, you were before it all. And soon our lives turned back to dust. When the sun comes up, satisfy us. Before the day has passed, us by. Consider him our hiding place, our shelter is alive. Because he lived and died for us, when the sun comes up, satisfy us before the day.
perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Beautiful this morning. Church, thank you for singing. Please be seated. All right, hopefully you're ready to go. I know I am. I've just been sitting there nervously, you know, like, okay, I'm ready to go. I always think it's like riding a roller coaster, you know, where you're just kind of in the car and it's going up, you know, it's kind of builds that anticipation. And then all of a sudden when it comes on down, you're like, yeah, this is awesome. And then you get off and you're like, I want to do this again. And that's why I was kind of like sitting down there. I was like, okay, yeah. And now I'm kind of ready to go on down the hill. There's a lot we're going to be doing through this conference. I just want to put in my plug to encourage you to be part of this every service. Because um, we can't cover all of the various aspects of missions in one, in one message on a Sunday morning. So there's going to be so many different aspects of missions and how it can connect you to missions, to what God is doing around the world throughout all of these next uh, services. And so I really want to encourage you to come, be a part of it, and, and sit in and listen to, so you can be challenged about your connection to worldwide evangelization. One of those things we're going to do at every service is kind of promote and highlight the mission trips. We've been advertising these now for a couple weeks. And uh, we have kind of dropped hints of that our church is going to be taking involved in six different mission trips this coming year. Uh, the, that's exciting. And they're going to have some of the different aspects and different facets of, of focus on these trips. But we really want to connect you uh, hands-on to what you can be involved in around the world. And so every service, starting even this morning, we're going to share about one of those trips uh, all the way through Wednesday. Then on Wednesday, when we conclude the service, there's going to be a handout that has how you can sign up for any of those, those trips. So you can sign up, just even in, just inquire, like uh, expression of interest. If you sign up, it doesn't mean you're locked in. But you can have an expression of interest to learn more, and we'll communicate with you some of the details of those respective trips and things. So here we're going to uh, share our first mission trip that's going to be taken uh, in next year in 2025. So some of you knew about this one already because you're signed up, but this is the first trip that will be launching next year. This is the ladies' trip specifically to Guatemala uh, to work with Dare for More Ministries uh, down there in the, the home that they have uh, to work with ladies uh, who've been taken in. And so right now we have 15 ladies who've signed up and have uh, paid their deposit. So we have five spots left over. So if maybe you've just been joining into our church or maybe uh, through this week, through what the Holy Spirit does in your life, you'd be like, hmm, maybe as a lady I would like to go on this trip. Um, that is going to be one of the opportunities that you can be involved in. And I think it's going to be a, a fantastic uh, opportunity to connect with one of the ministries we support, we partner with, with uh, Reba Bowman's Dare for More. And so you'd be able to see that firsthand and come back and share the stories of those lives that are being transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. And so tonight, you will have another one. So I know some of you are like anticlimactic, Stephen. We knew this one already. Oh, we, saw, we know that one. Well, tonight you don't know this one coming up. So come back tonight, watch that, and see what happens where we're going for next year. All right, if you would, if you look in the passage of Scripture that Pastor referenced already in Acts chapter number 5. We're going to look in Acts chapter number 5. The theme, as he has already expounded on, is go, stand, and speak. Pastor did preach a message about this back in, I think it was May, um, 
or mar- March or May, and he, those were his three points. Go, stand, and speak. So I was like, what am I supposed to do? I've been given this passage as a theme, so I'm going to do Go, Stand, Speak, Part 2, the sequel. You know, um, so that's what we're going we're gonna to look at it again and just kind of go back and look at this passage of Scripture in light of our missions conference. And before we read some of the verses, I want to have us just pray one more time. But this, as I pray aloud, this is what I want you to do and pray in your own heart. God, will you show me how you want me as an individual to be better connected to worldwide evangelization because of this week? Lord, whatever that is, I'll be willing to do. And our prayer, and I'll be very upfront, is that God would work in your hearts to do more, to do something, to sacrifice, to obey, and whatever that looks like. So may we start this conference with that prayer. Lord, here I am, under the preaching, under the the theme of this missions conference today, and hopefully throughout the rest of this week. Lord, will you just show us what you want us to do so that we can be greater involved in the cause of missions. So let's pray, then we'll read our scriptures and we'll get going. Lord, again, I am so thankful for the opportunity to uh, preach this missions conference, to be here at my church, the church I love, and to share my passion, things you have showed me over 25 years of being in missions. And so, Father, I pray that I would just be your vessel, that I would serve you well in this capacity. But God, I ask that you would allow your word to speak. I, allow, I pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to challenge us, open our eyes to the needs of this world. It is so easy for us to get focused in on ourselves and our own little worlds. So God, may this week help broaden our scope. Give us a passion, renew our passion for what needs to be done around this world in the hearts of people. Lord, I pray you would reveal to folks exactly what you want them to do, and may they be truly willing to do it. pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to look here in Acts chapter 5, starting at verse number 12. We'll pick up the story where it says this, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now, when the high priest and the chief, and uh, high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, "Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people." Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying. 
Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. So there's a lot going on in this passage of Scripture here, but we want to kind of break it down into some points that uh, will help us just consider our role in go, standing, and speaking. We started off here in this passage where the disciples were doing the work of representing Jesus Christ. Uh, They were doing good work amongst the people. We see that, and there were many that responded. We see that in in the verse number 12. There's lots of people who came out, and there were many people who uh, were going to believe in Jesus. This is an exciting time for the church. The church was growing. Uh, It was the the, the days filled with enthusiasm. I mean, think about not that many weeks earlier, you had thousands come to faith in Jesus Christ that Peter's preaching at Pentecost. And then in Acts chapter 4, you have 5,000 people who turn to believe in Jesus as the Messiah. So it would have been an exciting time. The, the church is going to face its first hiccups in chapter 5 in the passage we did not look at, where it covers the story of Ananias and Sapphira and their kind of deceit and trying to look good in front of others. But as a result of that, people were living with a fear of the Lord. People wanted to live out their faith. And things were happening. Miracles were occurring. Uh, And we see here that the disciples were gaining the respect of the community. As it says in that verse number uh, 13, but the people magnified them. The idea behind that truly is that they were esteeming them as men of great stature and celebrating them. I mean, can you imagine what it had been like for Peter? Just a few weeks earlier, he was a hunted vigilante, you know, just kind of like on the run from the, the government because... He was sided with Jesus. And now, just a few short weeks later, people are like, wow, this is Peter. Look at him. And he's gaining respect as well as some of the, the apostles and, uh, there in the early church. And, and so we see that happening. It makes us to point number one, a church in action. A church in action. The church, and the, under the apostles and this early church, are making a name for themselves. They're, they're gaining a reputation. They're, they're becoming known. And, and they were not seeking fame in, in any way. The, the disciples and the early church leaders were not saying, like, how can we make a name for ourselves? They were just going about serving the Lord, being involved in people's lives, and people began to recognize it and talk about it and, and see these people are doing something great. And we, there's a, the church began to make a name for itself because it was making a difference. It was making a difference. Making a difference in the lives of others. As they would go out and minister, and of course we see here many signs and wonders being done, lives were being transformed. People were coming to them with sickness and ailments, and they were find, walking away finding new hope, new life, in the name and power of Jesus Christ. And isn't that what we want to do as a church? Don't we want to have a name that people know us, not because we're trying to promote ourselves as be a big name in the community, but to be known by folks because we're making a difference in the lives of people all over. To be able to use, be used by God to say, Lord, here we are, we just want to minister to folks, and, and as a result, people's lives are being transformed. That's something great to be known for, to have that impact. A couple weeks ago, a pastor shared about, uh, from, he looked at some verses about the church of Thessalonica, and he sh- referenced 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, which just says this, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad. 
so that we need not speak anything. The church of Thessalonica became known. People began to, hey, that church in Thessalonica is doing such good work that people they had gained a reputation. You can go through and look at the church of Colossae. They too, people would talk about them. Hey, the church in Colossae, they're strong in their faith. The church at Ephesus also is recognized as a church that had love, and people were talking about the church at Ephesus because of their love towards, for Christ and their love for others. Can I say, there's a lot of reasons for people to talk about a church. We do it all the time, don't we? You know, we we kind of gain ideas about a church. Sometimes people may talk about a church because of its music. You know, just the, the style of music, or how good that music is, or how cringy that music may be sometimes. And people talk about it, like, oh, that church, yeah, they're known for their music. Or... Sometimes the church, oh, that's the church that has the problems. <laughs> you, know, you go there, oh man, there, there's, that church has problems. They've split four times over, or whatever the case may be. People are going to talk about churches. But wouldn't it be great to be a church that's known for having an impact in the lives of people all over? And lives are being transformed because of what's happening here at Calvary Baptist Church. That's what we want to be known for. We want to be known for that. We, we don't want to be known as a church that's dead or a church that's just focused on itself or a church that's insulated in our own little bubble. We want to be a church that has a focus for others and involved in the lives of others. A church that truly is in action. But then we look at verse number 13 through 16 again. We're going to see a church in motion. A church in motion. Where it says here, And of the rest, there is no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. Verse 15 is just an amazing verse when you really focus in on what's being said. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Now that is some wild stuff right there. What kind of shadow am I looming right now? It's not going to help anybody, right? I mean, that just, hey, can, you, can we just get you in the sight of Peter that as his shadow walks that maybe somebody will be healed and things. I mean, what a time as the early church was growing that was going on. And then you see that also, verse number 16, there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. So we see a church in motion. Number one, we see a church that ministered to the locals. As they just walk around, they're you know, in, impacting people in the community. That's what our church should be known for. As we think about worldwide evangelization, of course, our, our theme of the flags are trying to get you to think about the people of the world, think bigger than ourselves. May we also recognize we have a responsibility to minister to our local community. That as we stir our hearts for what's going on in some of these nations, that our hearts are also stirred about the people we are interacting with on a daily basis. Yes, it's so great to see the flag of Germany up there. Yes, we need missionaries in Germany. We need people to reach the folks in Germany. But why we focus and try to enhance what we do in a country like Germany, that does not negate the responsibility we have here locally. And, and the church here, the early church, is there being known as, hey, this is a church that's in motion, in action. There's things happening. They would also impact their local community. And we can occupy ourselves with ministering to those around us, and that is not a bad thing. This is not one at the expense of the other. It's ministering locally as we also have an impact globally. And that's what we're looking at this week. So they ministered to the locals. But then also that verse 16 tells us came, people came from out of town. In the church, they ministered to the out-of-towners. They ministered to the out-of-towners. You know, as, as they walked the streets, yes, there were the people from their local community, but then folks traveled from all over as well to be healed and to have the power of God touch their lives as well. And so people would come from afar to come to Jerusalem to hopefully catch a glimpse of Peter and the other disciples and John and Matthew and 
be used, that God would use them to impact their lives. You know, it makes me think of people coming from all over the world to here to Chattanooga. You know, what a conglomeration of people come to our community. Sometimes we don't even think about it. But just take um, UTC, our local college here. I just looked it up. UTC had students coming in from 55 different nations in this last year. What an opportunity to minister to folks who are coming in. You know, so Lord, yes, we're focused about people around the world, absolutely. But some of the world's coming to us. And may we have a heart and a burden and a passion to say, who's going to reach them? Like, we may not be able to go to Peru, but we can come to the folks who are coming here to our community from places like Peru. Fifty-five local, uh, different nations are represented just at UTC. I found this article. This was an article um, from CNN a few years ago, and it had this, talking about the immigration and, and diversity of communities, and this is what it said, in this county near the Tennessee-Georgia border, talking about Hamilton County, the growth in the Hispanic or Latino population has outpaced the national average. In the last decade, the number of residents who identified as Hispanic or Latino rose nearly 81%, or more than 12,000 people, compared to 23% nationwide. What is that saying in all that statistics? That we have people coming from different backgrounds here to our community. We have got to remember to focus on ministering to the local community. People from around the world coming from out of town, saying, hey, we're coming in Chattanooga. May we have a church, as a church have a heart to minister to them, to, to say, Lord, connect us with them. They're in our communities. We want to minister to them. Immigrants are coming to our community. It's kind of hard to find some of the, de- the, the statistics, but I can find this according to an analysis of census data says there is a growing number of foreign-born residents who have migrated to Chattanooga and helped make the scenic city the top major U.S. city when measuring the growth rate of foreign-born population. In the city of Chattanooga, foreign-born population jumped by more than 68 percent from 7,000 in 2013 to about 13,000 in 2017. That was the last data I could find 2018. So we know it's probably increased since then. When, when you're involved in ministry, especially in missions, one of the things you have to do is cross cultures. You know, we have family, family going to Thailand. Let me tell you, Thailand is nothing like Western culture of the United States. They're going to have to cross a culture to minister there. We have people coming here, and it may not be your culture, but can I, if we have a heart that beats to cross cultures... Say, Lord, they're coming here. May we minister to them. May we impact their lives. May we be used to, to, by the power of God to transform their lives because they came here. Some, like here in the scriptures, they came for medicine and help and they want to be healed. We have people coming into our community for education. We have people coming to our community for a new life. You know, a, a restart from whatever it may have had back in their own country. We have people coming because of maybe family. Uh, People coming for a whole wide variety of reasons. May we as a church, as we think about the world, but may also realize the world is coming here. And God, open our eyes to them and may we minister to them. Give us a heart for these folks so that we could be used by you to have an impact for these people. So even though, you know, here... It, you had people going the, from out of town to, the, to Jerusalem to where Peter and James and Matthew and John were at. We also have to recognize that it was just a small sliver of the population that came to Jerusalem. All, you think of all the sick that would have been there. It was only a small sliver that came to Jerusalem. There's still the need... And we're going to see unfold. Now, this passage here itself does not highlight this. We're going to look at that later on through this week. But there's still a need for us to go out into the world to impact and make a difference 
for the cause of the gospel. Yes, praise the Lord for the world coming here, but it's just a small sliver. We still have a need to go out into the world and make an impact. There are lives of people who know nothing about the gospel of Jesus Christ, which we have sung about. They don't even have an idea about it. And they need to have someone go and say, can we be used by the power of God to make a difference to impact your life and your world? It's not about physical transformation, but it's about spiritual transformation. I don't want to bog you down in numbers, but when you think about the world, and it's over 8 billion people, and you try to think about missions and how are we going to be connected to missions, we have to try to, we do have to talk some numbers, just a little bit. As of right now, based on research and those who do such studies, they would say that as of 2024, there are 7,000 unreached people groups in the world for the, about the gospel. Let me define what an uh, unreached people group is. An unreached people group is considered a people where Christ is largely unknown and the church is relatively insufficient to make Christ known without any outside help. Take, any, take a nation and think of just the different kind of community groups that live within that, that nation. And there are going to be some that have people, people groups that maybe there's a, a growing church and a burgeoning church and a church that can sustain itself. But to think that there's over 7,000, I'm sorry, 7,000 unreached people groups that they cannot on their own, as they stand today, have a sustainable outreach and evangelistic effort for the cause of the gospel. Why do we have a missions conference? It's because this is not the way God ever intended this to be. He didn't want the world to half the world know or a portion of the world to know. He wanted all the world to know what Jesus Christ has done. And when we consider that there's all these folks out there that have no understanding and cannot on their own sustain to do evangelistic efforts, that means there's going to have to be someone who comes in and assists and ministers and strives to be used of God to make a spiritual transformation in that area. And praise the Lord, that's what missions is all about. People are saying, Lord, use us to go try to make a difference in a community, in a village, in a city, in a country where the gospel needs to go forth. As we think of the, the um, different nations we have here, even represented, you know, we have, uh, again, they're not here yet, but we have a family going to Thailand. Uh, only approximately 1% of the population of the country of Thailand. Now, you don't even need to know what the, the number of that population would be. You know, get, don't want to get lost in numbers. But just think 1%. Would we all agree 1% is not a lot? 1% of the population of Thailand would claim to be evangelical Christian. Think about the United States if only 1% was Christian. Would we pray for, our, for something to be changed in our country? Absolutely. Do the people of Thailand have no less of a need to know the gospel and for, a God, for the showing of God to work in their lives? Someone's got to go to them. 1% of those who could identify and say, yes, we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. Think that it's the, kind of take this, the population of Texas and California combined. Okay, that's a big number, right? The, tech, the t Texas and California combined add that population, and you get approximately 71 million people in those two states. Take that to, move that to Thailand, which is about 72 million people, and only 1%. Can you imagine 1% of the people in Texas and California knowing Jesus Christ? That would grieve us. That would grieve our hearts. And this is why we focus on missions. 
Because we want to be a church that's in motion, a church that is going forth, a church that's making a difference, a church that's meeting the needs locally, but also then re- meeting the needs of those around, from out, out of the area. That we're going to go to them, not just going to wait for them to come to us. We're going to go to them and say, yes, we want to be used of God to make a difference. We have another missionary uh, who come, who's here, who um, has a population that's in the, again, millions and just like 9% would be evangelical Christian, the country of Brazil. It, still, it's just a sliver. So much more needs to be done. As you look around these flags, I love flags. I, I love what it stands for. I love what it represents. I, I love that right in front of me is the Australian flag, my second home country. That was purposely put there so I can look at it. Oh. They represent people in all around these places. Some are going to have a lot of light of the gospel, but many places have just a little bit of light of the gospel. But even if in some places there's lots of lights of the gospel, even still within those countries there's a need for people to go and be used of God to make a difference and be a transforming agent. Take a country like Mexico, just to the south of us. Yes, there's a lot of missionaries there, but... There's so many more that are needed to, be, to go forth and reach these folks. It's hard, it's difficult, it's not easy. Absolutely it's not, but it is worth it to be used of God to make a difference so that people can know the great truth of what Jesus Christ has done. A church that was in motion. But it doesn't stop there. Being in motion is not enough. We must be on mission, fulfilling the Great Commission, which takes us to point number three, a church in commission. A church in commission. They're doing the Great Commission. Verse number 17, we see then that the high priests are going to rise up and they're going to put put those disciples and apostles in prison. And then we, the angel miraculously opens the doors of the prisons to send forth. You know, and he goes out and says, hey, go out there. And you go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. You know, as, the, as these apostles did what they were called of God to do, they faced opposition. And it was, it was challenged. They were, ended up in jail for the night. Can I say that it will always be difficult you know, sometimes people say, oh, I could never go to another country. That's, oh, I could never do that. Well, yeah, can I tell you, it's hard. It's hard to learn language, hard to break into a culture, hard to become familiar with these things. It is hard. Cultures are dialo- diabolically opposed in many places to the claims of Christianity. Religious groups are opposed to the work that may be happening in sharing the gospel. I could tell you, it, Buddhists, they're not all just fun-loving people who, mm, it's not eat, pray, and love. Trust me, there is some hostility that goes on by Buddhist monks and Buddhist teachers to those who are Christian and identify with the claims of Jesus Christ. Uh, the stories I have personally, in my, in my years of ministry, traveling all over, I've been to 47 countries and, and interacted with so many different believers. Let me tell you that there is a lot of opposition that's out there. It, it's hard. It's not easy. There's, I will never stand up here and say, hey, be, surrender to be used of God in a foreign land because it's going to be absolutely amazing and fantastic. Think of all the, the blessings. It's just so smooth sailing. It is not. It's hard. It's difficult. It's challenging and you're going against so many headwinds that are against you. But, is it not worth it? Because even here, the angel, as they're in a prison, the angel opens the door and says, hey, go back out there. Go. Stand and speak. The pressures that they faced, the challenges that could have, oh, we don't want to go back out there. We've just spent a night in jail. Like, Why would we want to do this? but the importance of going forth. Going forth to any of these countries, any of these regions, any of these people groups are hard. Even if you go out into our local community in Chattanooga, you're going to face intimidation. Just the intimidation of just, 
What's going to happen if I say? How are they going to respond? You're going to face all that internal and external pressure to remain silent. And all that happens, even in a place where we know we're, we're not going to get tossed into jail. There's intimidation, there's pressure, there's these things, but it is worth it because why? Go stand and speak all the words of this life. It's because of the message we have, the gospel. This is why we go, we stand, and we speak. The phrase, all the words of this life, is a reference to all the life that is have had in Jesus Christ. We have the words of life. It breaks my heart. I wish I could take you all with me in some of the places I've been and, and let you see what these eyes have seen. When you stand before people and watch them go to a, a, a statue and give offering with the hope that they'll get good merit that will then create good karma that hopefully in a next life they'll reincarnate into something higher versus going, reincarnating into something lower. Or, or to go to a house of someone who follows Hinduism and see the altar, the puja they would call it, there in their, their house, see the candles and see, see all that they do with the hope that the, the divinities and the divine spirits and the spirit beings would do well to, for them and that they would please their gods. And to watch them, I remember going to a place in, in India and watching them actually carving out a, a, a statue. And, and you're just the irony of that. You're carving out a statue to a, for a god that literally someone has made. And I, they would say, oh, we don't believe he, that statue is a god, but it's a represented, representation of him. But still, just the idea of watching these people so sincere to all their life dedicated to these spirit beings, striving with the hope that maybe they'll reincarnate, maybe they'll reach nirvana, maybe they'll reach Brahma, maybe they'll, uh, if the Islamic world, they'll do their prayers five times a day, they'll give of their, their offerings and tithes that they need to, they have to give so much percentage and each year of their income and all of these things, all with the hope that maybe they'll reach Allah in paradise. And they, 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 they believe this with all sincerity. But we are the ones with the words of life. And there are people right now in this world who can wait, be born today and die in 60, 70, 80 years and go through their entire life never hearing the presentation of the gospel to them. We are the ones with the words of life. But we have to communicate it to people out there who are doing everything they can to try to find how do we find life. Do we find it this way? Do we find it that way? Do we find it in this method? Do we find it in this faith practice? Do we find it in, in this devotion? We who know Christ have the words of life. This is why we have a missions conference. Because someone has to go, stand, and speak in these nations to these people to say, here are the words of life. Jesus Christ has done all the work for you. You don't have to work to earn your salvation. All of these nations that are represented, plus so many more, any, choose a place, and there's a need to communicate the words of life. The church was on commission, fulfilling the Great Commission. They could have stopped. They, there were so many hints. They could have said, no, we're not going to go. But they continued on. A famous statement by Oswald J. Smith says, no one has the right to hear the gospel twice while there remains someone who has not heard it once to think that they don't even have an idea about it. And that's just not hyperbole. I've personally, in my own experience, talked with folks who had no idea of who Jesus is. Like, no concept at all. It's like, who, who's Jesus? And to be able to share who Jesus is is one of the most rewarding things. Now, I can't say that that person responded in faith to Christ, but that someone went and told them 
That's what is necessary. Go and tell them. I think it's interesting. Think about it. Look at this verse again. Verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and tells them, go stand and speak in the temple. Think about it. The, the, the angel. I, when I was reading this and studying it, I was like, if an angel, who do you think is going to have more ability to get a, get, gain an audience who's going to respond? Us or an angel? You know, if an angel all of a sudden like glowing and shiny and, you know, and all this, and it's like, hey, you need to respond to Jesus. You would think maybe people would listen, right? I mean, think of what the, the, the shepherds did when they saw angels in the sky all in their choir. What did they do? Boom, they took off running to tell people about the, the, the birth of the Messiah. I mean, boom, instantaneous. They took off and running. So you're given the option, an angel to communicate a message or us, we would probably say the angel would be more effective. But in God's plan, he uses us. He says, you go, you stand, you speak all the words of this life. Lord, somebody else, use some other method. No, no, you go, you speak these words of life. And I think, Lord, there's so many other better communicators, so many other better methods that people could draw people's attention. He wants us. He wants to use this church. He wants to use the people of this church. He wants to use believers all over to accomplish the Great Commission. Then fourthly, we look at this, a church in focus. A church in focus. God wants to use us. We have been the ones that we can testify of our experience and the love of God and he's, what he has done. These apostles here, they went out and proclaimed. They still were going to receive opposition. They were told, don't you dare ever speak again about in the name of Jesus Christ. Yet the disciples continued forth to be the witnesses about the Savior. You know, that word witness, it's a legal term, meaning someone who can testify in a judicial setting. It means you personally can experience something and you can share what you've experienced. We are witnesses of what God can do in a life. I think that's why God uses us and not the angels, because the angels have never been transformed by the redemptive power of Christ. They could just speak a message. We could speak a personal experience. God's changed me. God has changed my life. I too was hopeless, but he has saved me. And may we be witnesses. You're going to hear that term throughout this week as we look at different verses. Being witnesses. We who have experienced have a responsibility to share what we have experienced and know the transformative power of Jesus Christ and the word of truth and the gospel. And so this is why I believe God wants to use us. And so, yes, it's going to be obstacles. Yes, it's going to be difficult. But may we keep our focus and persevere on. These apostles kept focus. Everything, said, everything to them said, stop, don't communicate anymore. You be quiet about it. And they were like, no, because we are focused about what we're about. Each family here, each person here, we need to be focused on how does God want to use us to get the message out. There may be someone here that God wants to call forth into missions to be that standing representative in a foreign land. You can I say? Then be focused on that. Lord, I'll surrender to it and I'll do what you've put in my heart to do. I was 16 years old when that happened in my life. 16 years old, I didn't have any interest in missions whatsoever, but God worked in my heart through a missions trip and surrendered my life into missions. And, and so 25 years of being involved in mission work. What a blessing. Having that focus. God, this is what you've called us to do. But even as for us, may, not everyone's called to go, I know that. But you're going to be challenged about how to give to help those who are going. Because our church wants to have a worldwide impact. And the, the more we give, the more we can partner with who are going around the world to tell the gospel. And so that's what those faith promise cards are about. You know, we've asked you to pray about what to give, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that in more detail this, throughout these, these days. 
We're going to encourage you. Be a part of, Lord, I know it's going to be hard. I know the economy is tough. I know the struggles of inflation and bills and all this. But God, I have to keep my focus on what's there. Yes, there's hardship and opposition, but the focus I need to have is making sure people know Jesus Christ. And so my focus is, Lord, use my finances. I'm going to give of my financial means to help support those who are going around the world. I believe the best missions conference is not a certain percentage reached in financial, you know, financial. I've been at conferences, Pastor mentioned, that I've been at about 200 to 250 missions conferences. So I've seen a lot of things done. I've seen the, the bar graphs or the thermometers, you know, and can we get this much money? And we're going to talk about, a bit more about that. But I don't think that makes the best missions conference if you can hit a certain financial threshold. To me, in my opinion, in my study, the best missions conference is when there's 100% participation. Every believer saying, I will do my part to help financially fund so that those who can go or are called to go can do such. Think about if 100% of every family of our church gave to help financially support our missions program. Every, every family going, as a couple, as a family, as a household, even as maybe individuals, children, teenagers, you doing your part, children doing their part, we as individuals, believers, who have been called by God to go forth and stand and speak, we will help financially those who are doing such if God has not called us to the other most parts of the world. Lord, here we are. We want to help those who are going. The only thing that stops us from getting more partnerships with people who are proclaiming the gospel is our resources. That's it. If we had the funds, we would probably take on as many missionaries as we possibly could take on. But the funds are limited. Wouldn't it be great, even if just this year, we have 93 missionaries. There, you see them in your book. Wouldn't it be great if we can financially increase so that we could even just take on the four that are here with us? at the very least. That means people are going to have to say, Lord, get me involved. I want to give. Stir my heart. Let me give financially. Let me stay focused on what my purpose is. You may not be able to do much, but we're going to ask you to participate in that. In a moment, we're going to close and have the invitation. and Then you're going to see, after the invitation time, you're going to, uh, you're going to see some of the uh, offering plates on the altar here. If you have decided and you've already prayed about what you're going to give financially, you don't have to give it today, it's just that card, but if you already know what you're going to do financially for missions for this year, then you can come up and just put the card in the plate. You know, we're not trying to make a show of it or anything, but it's, a, it's an act of worship. Lord, you are worthy of being known throughout the world, and I, wanna, I want you to be known. So I'm going to give so that others who are doing that can go. And so it's, an, it's a truly, it's an act of worship of even just saying, Lord, here, here's my offering, what I put on the card. And we're going to talk more about this. You don't, throughout the week, each, each, each service, the offering plates will be here. But if you feel prepared, you can do that this morning. And I know there's some of you who won't be back for the rest of this, this the conference. So I, can I encourage you to do it tonight? Say, Lord, this is what I want to give. I want, to, I want to sacrifice because of the focus of the Great Commission. And I want our church to be involved, church of action, involved in the lives of people locally and globally. And here, here I am doing what I can. My limited resources or whatever, God, here I am. I'm sacrificing so that you can be made known. May we bow our heads and close our eyes as we just consider what does the Lord want from you. I pray that each that during this time, as even as we speak and we pray and we focus, that you would just can again say, Lord, how do you want me to be involved? There is no believer at all who should not participate in the proclamation of the gospel. And, and so first off, may you say, Lord, maybe you want me to go stand and speak in a foreign land to a different people group. 
And Lord, if that's what you want, I will surrender to that call. We would love, and my prayer personally has been that God would call forth someone from our church to surrender to serve in missions somewhere around the world to be able to represent the gospel in a foreign land across a culture. But I recognize again that that's not for everyone, so maybe someone here will just pray, Lord, help me to be focused on your commission for the gospel to go forth, and I want to do my part financially. Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm by faith going to give above and beyond our tithe. By faith, I'm going to give sacrificially to help assist the financial program of our church, which is used to support and send missionaries around this world. We pray, just spend some time praying about that in this. And also, for those, I, I recognize that this is a message for the church. We're, we're focusing in on the, the call of missions and evangelization to the world by the local church that's been given to us. But maybe there's someone here today who's never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I know the message was not about what Christ has done. It was about proclaiming that to the, to the places of this world. But if you're here today and you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you do not know what it means to have Jesus Christ as your Savior, to know what it means to have a hope of this life and a life to come because of the redemptive work and transforming power of Christ in your life. Can I just plead with you, don't leave today without inquiring about that, without talking to one of us. We would love to help you to know more. There'll be, we'll, uh, be pastors in the lobby, down here in the front. You can come to any of us and speak to us and say, yeah, I would love to know more. And in a moment, we're going to have the piano start playing, and we're going to stand to our feet. Once the piano plays, you can stand to your feet, and then just spend some time praying, God, how do you want to use me? And if you're ready to put your offering, your grace-giving card in the plate, then you can come forward and do that just as an act of, of worship. God, I want to give so that you can be known as people go stand and speak all over this world. I'm going to ask Jennifer to start playing. We'll ask you all to stand. And as you stand, you're praying, Lord, how do you want to use me? How could I be used? What do you want from me for the cause of the worldwide proclamation of the gospel? Financially, personally, individually. God, what do you want to do through me? The music's going to play. I'll stay silent. Pastor's going to take it from there. If if you're ready to give your offering card, you can put that, come up during this time and while we're praying and slip that in say Lord may you use this that people can around this world know the great truth of Jesus Christ Thank you.